It's you. Nobody else move. You can cry, you can breathe, and you can die. Hell, you're gonna be doing all those things. Damn! Taking it like a champ! Have you ever wondered what would happen if you mixed Mythbusters with The Walking Dead? We are Zombie Go Boom! Filmmakers and zombie survival enthusiasts. Using our scientifically accurate zombie heads, we put retail weapons, homemade weapons, and everyday objects to the test in order to see what will save you during the zombie apocalypse. Survive, protect, and kick undead ass. Hey, what's up, survivors? Welcome to another mind-blowing episode from Zombie Go Boom, the bloodiest show on YouTube. I'm Chuck Murray. I'm Charles Fultz. And we have Glenn here from The Walking Dead. Not The Walking Dead you see on the TV show, but The Walking Dead you see on the comic book. And the reason why he's here is because we're going to be testing out Lucille, a.k.a. the barbed wire baseball bat used by Negan, not only in the comic book, but also in the TV show. And spoiler alert, in the TV show you may not know who's going to get hit with the Lucille. But in the comic book, it was Glenn, issue 100. Big nerd right here. So, before we get started on this testing, we gotta make it. So let's go buy the supplies. Right now, we are on our way to pick up the supplies to make today's weapon, which is... A dun, dun, dun. bat with, with barbed wire wrapped around it. That's right, we're making Lucille from The Walking Dead. We've never tested one of those before. No, we haven't. The closest we've gotten is a steel pipe with barbed wire on it. Now, the thing about barbed wire is that it hurts a lot if you're a person, but if you're a zombie, you know, you feel no pain. So we don't know how much is actually going to add to the weapon. We have a feeling that it may not add very much to the power of the weapon. In, in fact, it may just cushion it, but we won't know until we try it. So let's see if we can find uh, everything that we need. All right, so we're looking for baseball bats right now at a uh, sports store. And then we're going to go look for the Don't listen to this guy. He's lying. Wire. He's lying. He's holding my arm right now. <laughs> my arm. <laughs> anyway, where are the baseball bats? I don't even know. I Do you know? I don't know where the baseballs are. Baseballs. Hey, Do you guys good. see any baseballs anywhere? Have you seen my baseball? Have you? <laughs> Uh-oh. There we go. High school baseball, baby. All right, so the barbed wire is gonna add a little weight, but not a lot of weight. So we're gonna go with this 34 inch Ash Louisville Slugger, and it should do a lot of damage just by itself. But with the uh, barbed wire, it may do more because it's steel. It may do less because it might cushion the blow, right? It could go either way. All right. We've never done it before, so we don't know. Yep. So let's pick one and get out of here. All right, now that we got our baseball bat, we're gonna go to the tractor supply place in order to get the barbed wire and the fencing nails, which are more like hooks. Yeah. Hey, what's up guys? We just got out of Academy Sports and we met a guy that works there that's really cool and he really likes Zombie Go Boom and he gave us a really cool idea. Basically his idea was to put a bunch of zombies on some treadmills and wire them up to some alternators and, you know, basically re-energize batteries with the zombies by making them walk on the treadmills, which is a pretty awesome idea. Yeah, basically using the zombies as an energy source, which I don't think anybody has approached it. So somebody got lost drove 6.8 miles away from our destination. That's not true. I'm not gonna say who it is, but he's driving. Who's driving? I'm not driving. If I were driving, we wouldn't have been lost. Mm. Mm, this is weird, very awkward situation we're in right now. Hey audience, I wanna show you what you look like real quick. That's what you look like. Is it going into infinity? I don't know. No, I can't tell what it's I doing. I can't see my <laughs> shot either. It's doing a bunch of Only the stuff. audience can see what just happened yeah. there. What? You feel like you belong in here? I don't feel awkward in here because there's a lot of stuff that I can use 
to kill with. But if you're like, do you feel like your people no. are around? I feel like I should be carrying a banjo and wearing a straw hat. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> That's a huge crowbar. Guess who found it? Guess who what? found it? Guess who, who found the barbed wire? Who found wire? the barbed wire? Who was like, hey, it's probably outside. Nato Gwyn. Got us lost, but then he actually found the barbed wire. And we're gonna try to get some uh, thin gauge barbed wire so we can really do it. Tighten it up, make it really dense so it's not cushiony. Do we have to buy a whole spool? I don't know. All right, now we're at Lowe's. These are fencing nails. Yep, they're like staples, and that's what we're gonna use to put the barbed wire onto the bat. All right, so we got everything. We also got some lunch, so we're gonna go back to the house and eat, and then we're gonna be seeing if this barbed wire bat can be built, will be built. Is it a good build? Is it a good weapon? And whether or not it's gonna be able to kill Zombies. So stick around. We don't know who actually gets killed in the TV show. We have some guesses, but uh, what's your guess? Uh, I'm gonna guess Abraham. Abraham? Yep. I'm gonna guess Eugene maybe takes it. Um, but anyway, in the comic book, it's Glenn. So we made this Tim Head look like Glenn, not from the TV show, but Glenn from the comic book. That's why he's wearing the baseball cap. And the reason why he looks so realistic is because Charles' wife, Desiree, did a really, really awesome job making sure that that was the case. Now we have made, been sent, and tested a ton of modded bats in the past, but we haven't tested a barbed wire bat. Mostly because we didn't think it would work more than just a regular bat. But now, Charles is going to show you our way of making the Lucille in real life. Alright, we got the bat. Got these pliers, got these fencing nails, and we've got 45 pounds of barbed wire. Let's get started. We're going to use these fencing nails basically to keep the barbed wire attached to the baseball bat, but we're going to have to do it in a specific way because we don't want to split the grain, so I'm going to go against the grain and see how that works. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it with this little bitty hammer, but we'll see. Now, I'm going to start the nail first and then just hook the uh, barbed wire into it. This wood is pretty hard. That's Whoa. what she said. <laughs> okay, I'm going to put a secondary nail in there just to make sure it holds. Good enough for government work. I'm going to put nails all the way around the top section because I don't want the top section to slip off the top of the bat because that would really suck and we would probably have to start all over. Oh. Push it up. Okay, they've, they've all been bending. I've just been smashing them flat. You want me to do this? Yeah. I really think it's Abraham, because out of all the people there, I think Abraham would probably be the only one who would take it like a man. Yeah. Yeah. And it makes sense that he would kill the biggest one. Yeah, exactly. The biggest threat. Kill the most threatening mm -hmm. person. You're making me really nervous with that camera. <laughs> that, yeah. Oh, that I, don't, was, I don't care about thumbs. That was close, man. Oh, nice. 
nice. Good job. Hammer that down. That's it. We're done. Alright, now we just have to weigh it and everything for the tail of the tape, but... Is it heavier? Uh, it's a little heavier. Yeah, it's a little heavier. Wow. I think it's gonna do well. Yeah, me too. The Barbed Wire Baseball Bat, aka Lucio. This 34-inch and 3-pound Louisville slugger with a tightly wrapped 15-gauge barbed wire coil business end is ready to bring the smackdown on any undead or living opponent. Made popular by The Walking Dead's baddest antagonist Negan, we know it to be awesome. And sure, it's probably awesome enough to get the ZGB seal of approval, but will it be awesome enough to get the overkill seal of destruction? Only one way to find out. All right, now we're ready to test Lucille on Glenn here, but before we do that, I just want to let you guys know that one of the biggest concerns that we had when we were making Lucille is making sure that the barbed wire stayed dense and stayed tightly wrapped because if we didn't do that, then it would act like a cushion and a lot of the kinetic energy that we would be trying to put into our target here would dissipate in the cushioning of this barbed wire. What you have to understand is a barbed wire baseball bat is mostly meant to cause pain. Zombies don't feel pain, so we have to make this in a way where it'll actually help you get through the cranial cavity of a zombie in order to kill it. And and the only way to do that is to make sure that the steel is dense enough to act like steel. Very hard, very tough. Now, in this particular test, Glenn is not yet a zombie, so the pain does matter. But normally, Lucille is meant to kill a zombie. So, this is a zombie slash survivor test. We'll see what happens. We do have a really nice skin analog here. So we'll be able to see any skin damage that comes from it. And obviously, this guy is going to go boom after, I don't know, second, third strike. What do you think? Yeah, third or fourth. All right, Charles, so what is your plan of attack? Well, just like in the show, we're going to do two vertical strikes to the top of his head, and then I'm just going to go f***ing crazy. Oh, yeah. Damn! Taking it like a champ. Damn, he's bleeding. All right, the first hit had a lot of padding to get through. It had to get through the hat, it had to get through the hair, it had to get through the skin, the flesh, then the bone, then into the cranial cavity. So what it did was it scratched the skin quite a bit, and then we didn't think that it did anything else. But judging from the fact that the second hit completely caved in the top of the skull, we know that that first hit fractured the skull just enough to make it so that the second hit was totally able to get through the cranium and into the cranial cavity. This is a zombie kill. Two hits and it's a zombie kill. But the first hit, judging by the fact that it did actually fracture the skull, is definitely a concussion, probably some hemorrhaging, probably human death. Maybe not zombie death, but eventually human death. Not right away death, but death. And then this second hit totally cemented it. Now we're just gonna let Charles go crazy and make this Glen head go boom. Fun. Let's do it. Stuck. Oh shit. Damn.
All right, so as you can see, this head is absolute mush. There is brain basically coming out of it right here. It's completely mush. It's just caved in. Definitely a kill, zombie or not. Uh, thing that we did notice is that the barbs on the barbed wire baseball bat kept getting stuck on the hair. So that is a problem if you're going up against a bunch of zombies. But is it a powerful weapon? Does it work? Yeah, absolutely it does. In fact, it worked so well that it knocked the entire head off of our rig, so we had to reset. And that is when we noticed the fact that it's just so caved in. So now we're just gonna finish it off and see what happens. All right, for this final make a zombie go boom part, we're gonna leave the wig off so you can really see the gore-tastic spectacularness of zombie go boom and what this show is all about, baby. Plus, we wanted to see what these barbs will do to skin without having the hair in the way. Yeah, that too. Whoa, stop, stop. All right, so Charles cracked it in the jaw there, and we would have gone crazy, but the fact of the matter is that it fell off of the rig again because that is a very powerful weapon. And uh, just touching the jaw here, it feels like bone, and it's completely shattered. Like, you can feel that grinding whenever you push in on it here. Also, the temporal bone right here is completely broken. Let's see if I can... You can hear that sound real quick. Anyway, it's just grinding, it's crushing. That jaw is completely compromised. Let's keep going. So here's some skull pieces that I found right there. So as you can see, we've gotten to the point where we are at the exact thickness of actual skull. The cranial cavity is 100% anatomically correct. And the bone material that we are using is actually just porous enough to break and tough enough to cut just like real bone and I think we finally got to the point where I'm just incredibly, incredibly proud of these heads. I mean, just look at how awesome they act. And uh, we're going to get an orthopedic doctor to come in sometime soon to check these things out and really let us know 
how we've done and what we can do to improve even further. All right, so there's the barbed wire baseball bat, AKA Lucille, get the zombie go boom seal of approval. Well, it can't kill a zombie. It takes probably two whacks in order for you to be able to do it. But there are a few problems with it. A baseball bat just by itself will take about two whacks in order to destroy a zombie. Sometimes one, depending on how you hit it and in what part of the head you hit it. You know, we've talked about this before. The temporal bone is the thinnest part of the skull. So you hit that, it's probably going to be one time with a baseball bat. The parietal bone, if you hit straight on that, that could be a one hit kill, two hit kill. But the frontal bone, that's going to take the most amount of hits. So does it work? Will it kill a zombie? Yes. Is it better than a regular baseball bat? No. Why not? Well, it doesn't guarantee you a one hit kill. It's harder to wield because there's more weight in front of it. It's harder to carry because you have all of these barbs that can poke you at any given moment which could spread the infection to you if the pathogen is in the blood. It gets stuck on clothes as you saw during the test and it can get stuck on hair as you saw during the test. And if you're fighting multiple zombies that is a big problem. If your weapon gets stuck you might lose your weapon. So does it get the zombie go boom seal of approval? Yeah. Does it get the zombie go boom overkill seal of destruction? No. Then again, I didn't wield it, so my opinion may be different. What were your thoughts? Well, I noticed that the barbed wire actually adds a little bit more weight. So more weight equals more force, more damage. Uh, also, the barbed wire kind of acts like armor. It, it protects the bat and keeps it itself from getting damaged too much. And lastly, the barbed wire helps to concentrate the force of your swing into a smaller area of your target because of all these little bumps and stuff all over it. And we've also converted the outer layer of the bat from wood to metal, which obviously makes it harder. Those are all great points, Charles. Based on those points, do you think that we should give it the overkill seal of destruction? I think we should. Um, but that's just my opinion. I don't know. What do you guys think? Yeah, let us know in the comment section below. ZGB seal of approval or overkill seal of destruction? You guys let us know. And also, since you brought up another really good point, which is that this acts like armor, so the bat isn't going to splinter or break as easily, we should torture test it. Oh, Maybe that's how yeah. we figure out okay. if it gets the overkill seal of destruction. All right, yeah, torture tests. Let's, yeah. let's do it. But in the meantime, really let us know your opinion in the comment section below. Hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you punch the living crap out of that like button if you enjoyed this video. Also subscribe if you want to watch more. We also have a bunch of videos in the description below. Just keep watching Zombie Go Boom because we have a lot of badass episodes. And in the description, I made sure I put all sorts of bludgeoning weapons for your entertainment. With another mind-blowing episode from Zombie Go Boom, I'm Chuck Murray. I'm Charles Fultz. I'm Glenn. And we will see you next time. That went over your house. I saw that. It's pretty clean, yeah. relatively clean. Oh, I almost hit you, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's good. I like it. All right. <laughs> The blood looks cool there. Yeah, it's all over the lens. So. Oh, oh nice. shit. Rolling. It's you. Nobody else move. You can cry, you can breathe, and you can die. Hell, you're gonna be doing all those things. Damn! Taking it like a champ! Good. One more? Okay. Well, it's fresh.